So cleaning the metal, how do I clean the metal? With TIG welding, the way I describe to everybody, because they always say, hey, I heard with TIG welding, it's got to be pretty clean. And the answer is yes. Uh, what I say is, ideally, it needs to be surgically clean. The cleaner your metal is, the cleaner your weld's going to be. I know it's a pain in the butt to clean your metal um, and spend all that time, but it's really, really going to help your weld in the end, and it's going to give you better results uh, overall. So what I have here is I have a couple pieces that I got ready. So this is just a standard piece of um, like eighth inch steel here. This is uh, actually cold rolled. So when you have hot rolled steel, there'll be, there'll be like a, a, a mill scale, which actually our welding table here has on it. If you can see, it has this gray, more of a dark gray tone to it. That's like the mill scale. It's pickled and oiled. That's a coating that keeps it from corroding. This is cold rolled, so it doesn't have that coating on it, but it still has uh, an oil and a little bit of a film on it from the, from the mill that keeps it from rusting. Um, if we were using a MIG welder, sure, we could throw this down, lay a weld, it would burn it off, it really wouldn't be an issue. If I try and weld this just as is with the TIG, what it's gonna do is it's gonna burn up all those oils and, and contaminants and even the microscopic corrosion off of the surface and you'll start seeing a, uh, like a brown halo around your weld or even black. If you start seeing that on your welding, then you know that uh, you need to clean the metal a little better or you have a gas issue. So what I do is I start by, and to save you guys watching me grind for ages, I've already prepped these ahead of time. So what I use is one of these little, um, little die grinders that we offer. Uh, you know, a lot of you guys probably have them in your box. And I put one of these little 36 grit sanding discs on there and I buzz over my part. Um, if I'm doing sheet metal or something that's thin, I probably won't go this aggressive. I might use a DA sander or something, but for what we're doing today, I buzzed over it with this 36 grit. Uh, got all the uh, contaminants off, got it down to bare metal. So I'll put it here so you can see the difference in the two of them. So this part here is just about ready to weld. I prepped this up probably about an hour ago. Uh, one thing you want to keep in mind and a mistake I see uh, a lot of people make is that they'll clean apart pretty good and say they start working on it and then they leave for a couple days and you come back to work on your project again and you start welding. Well, what you really need to do is clean the part before you start TIG welding again. Even if it doesn't really look like there's any visible surface rust, there could be corrosion that's, that's started on the piece or uh, contaminants have gotten in the metal that may cause uh, a dirty weld. So what I always like to do so I keep these little uh, scuff pads, I'll call them, or scotch brake pads. I like to keep those around. So, oh man, our iPad's talking to us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we got our iPad over there for answering questions. Apparently I said something that it liked and it started, it started talking to me. Anyways, scuff pads. I like to keep these, these red or green scuff pads around um, and I prep it with our uh, pre low VOC. Um, this is like a paint prep, uh, but it's also really good for using for cleaning panels before you weld. Now, the one thing I want to stress is do not use anything but straight acetone or our low VOC pre-painting prep. Um, either of those are acceptable to use. If you use our standard pre or even like brake clean or something like that, uh, what it does is it creates your own mustard gas. Nasty stuff. So if you spray brake clean or something like that on a part, wipe it all down and then go to weld, even though it may seem clean, it leaves a residue on the surface that when you weld actually burns it off, creates a gas which goes under your helmet and it's basically mustard gas. It's going to give you shortness of breath, you're going to get lightheaded. It's not a good feeling, especially when you're welding. It's not going to help your weld no matter what you do. So I take this pre like this and uh, our low VOC pre evaporates pretty quick, so what I do is I usually spray it on the actual scotch spray pad. And I'll go over my area where I'm going to be welding with the scotch spray just one, one final time here. And I'm trying to get it in there where, the, where we're going to be welding on that overlapped area. 
So the nice thing is this stuff evaporates really quick. So in a couple of minutes where I'm talking, this is going to be fully evaporated and ready to weld. I'll do this one too while we're at it. So you can use the Scotch-Brite. Um, another thing that you can do, uh, I use it a lot on aluminum, is you can take a wire brush, preferably a stainless wire brush, and you can go over the part and hit it with the wire brush. It'll take off any uh, little bit of corrosion or, or uh, imperfections in the metal, or not imperfections, any dirt or anything that's gotten in the metal. Uh, a tip, get yourself two stainless brushes, or three potentially. Why? You want to have a different stainless brush for every type of material you're using. I usually write on the side of it steel, aluminum, stainless, whatever. I'll write it right on the wire brush. So if you want to write aluminum on here, the reason you want to do that is because when you use this steel and, and, and put the stainless brush on there, it's putting steel particles right into the wire brush. Then when we go to use it on like a piece of aluminum like this, you're going to end up finding that uh, it's grinding steel right into your piece. So. That's the, uh, the, the basics of prepping it.